Welcome to the very first public episode of Bookie Bookie, where we talk about books and other stuff, but mainly books. And today we'll be reading about a tiny little novel that has changed the face of science fiction. We'll be talking about The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. With me, I have Dino, I have Jay, I am Dylan, and uh, we'll be talking about this book, what we think of it, um, in a little bit. We'll first have a, uh, a synopsis and a discussion of themes, so that uh, people who haven't read the book at least know a little bit of what it's about. And um, after that, we'll have a podcast video where we go into length about, uh, about the book and uh, things revolving around it. But anyway, let's uh, get on with the uh, synopsis. Uh, yeah, that's you. Dino, what's it about? The Time Machine starts with a time traveler who tells his audience about his time machine. He shows them to, he shows his version, his, his machine to his guests. Then a week later, um, the guests uh, see him arrive again. He is haggardy looking and limps. He then tells them about his trip into the future, his actual trip. Um, he goes to 802,701 AD, where he uh, meets the Eloi, that's a childlike, fairy-like race, uh, humans, um, and uh, he thinks he has landed in, in paradise, but then um, the, his time machine is stolen by the Morlocks. Not the Morlocks! <laughs> evil, evil uh, cave dwellers who feed on the Eloi and who... Um, so uh, man, mankind has evolved into two different races, uh, then the time traveler has to uh, get his machine back, he then travels further into time uh, to the last moments of the dying earth and uh, the story ends with him returning to the, to the present, telling his story uh, and then going off into time again. Alright, and uh, for the themes we have Jay. Regarding themes in the time machine, first we have class, arguably, in that we see a separation in classes in uh, the, the Murloc and the Eloy, and we also see in the, uh, in the present that the dinner guests aren't necessarily introduced by their names, but by their jobs or by their classes. Uh, we see time, in that uh, we see the effects that time has and the relativity, and time is also the thing that moves the story forward. We see science, in that we see that science creates, but also has, uh, also destroys, and we see that science decays as well. And uh, regarding looser themes, we see passivity in some form, in that uh, a lot of elements in the story are passive, uh, like the dinner guests, the Eloi, and at the end of the book, the Earth itself. And we also see that the book could be uh, interpreted as uh, a story about communism, or at least uh, a critique on capitalism, wherein the Eloi represent the rich upper class and the Morlock represent the working class. All right, thank you very much. Now for the big question. What did we think of this novel? Well, actually I liked it a lot. Um, I think the book, it, I would certainly recommend it to anyone who's interested in science fiction as this is one of the well, founding father books of this genre. Um, uh, the end of the book, the, the last part of the book is a little bit boring. Uh, it's not the, the climax is not that good, but uh, the tension. Well, yeah, there is tension uh, certainly until <laughs> the till yeah, the last part of the book. I like if, if I may ask, what yeah. would you consider the climax? You mean uh, until the, like uh, when he escapes the Morlocks and goes yeah, to the when future? He, when, then, then yeah, 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 that, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. well, actually, the last battle with the Morlocks was not that. <laughs> Great. I mean, Morlocks aren't that impressive. No, no. I mean, Morlocks! No! Morlocks! Yeah, yes. Not Morlocks! Morlocks! So I would say, till the uh, museum, I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like I like the I like the book a lot. It's um, uh, uh, it's it's funny. I remember thinking um, when people on the internet discuss like, oh, the fourth dimension is time, and I'm like, that's stupid. <laughs> And then I read the first chapter of this book, and I'm like, oh, that's brilliant, of course! <laughs> it's, um, I can see why this is a very influential book. Um, I've read too little sci-fi to make these sort of statements, but I feel like this is what science fiction is supposed to do. It presents, um, yeah, some, some thought-provoking ideas, but it's packed in a little adventure story. 
So it's um, yeah, I I say um, it's it's a it's a good uh, it's a good one for uh, for younger audiences even I think. That's, it's yeah, that's up. Mm, no, it's it's good for uh, people getting into literature I think, but not everyone. I I can see that it's not a good story for everyone. Speaking of which, I believe you weren't uh, that yes. big a fan. So um, doing the wrong thing here and disregarding the context and just basic focusing solely on my my enjoyment of the book. Um, I thought it was very. I felt it felt very slow at first. Um, uh, I felt that there was no real conflict because we know uh, that we know that the time traveler comes back because that's what kicks off the story. That's true. Which means that whatever happens in the future, there's no real stakes um, of the book itself. It was. It's my version was only 72 pages. Um, there was no real real tension introduced until like page 20, and no proper conflict until page 40. Um, so, like in that regard, it wasn't like I, I, I read it because we were going to discuss it. Basically, <laughs> if we were yes. going to discuss it, I would not I would not have finished it. But I'm glad. Uh, yeah. yeah, we disagree. That's uh, the most interesting thing to see. So, um, if you were to give your enjoyment of this book a grade out of ten, five point five, barely passing. Five point five out of ten. I was actually um, between an, uh, an eight or a nine, believe it or not. It's. Um, I, I, I had a blast reading this book. It's. Uh, it goes into the ideas that I typically find very interesting, but I guess I'll go with an eight out of ten. I would give it a seven point five out of ten. But seeing the context of when it was written and the influence it has, I would give it for its time an eight plus. Agreed with your context grade. <laughs> Alright, thank you very much. Um, this was a little short video on the book and we'll be going into a lengthier discussion uh, in the podcast. There will be a link right here. I hope I did this right. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you there. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> if not, um, we'll see you uh, next month, I hope. At the, uh, well, actually at the end of this month, we'll be discussing Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, which is also uh, very short, so uh, read it if you don't want uh, spoilers. And, uh, well, Oh, uh, I'll see you soon. I don't think it's uh, designed for humans specifically. <laughs> but it is designed for Morlocks! Morlocks! No, not Morlocks! <laughs> not flesh-eating Morlocks. <laughs>